The pond behind me was neglected for years. Three years ago, we set out to create a fishery that everyone here at Aquatic Control could enjoy. In this video, we're gonna break down how we got there. Hi guys, I'm Wes Goldsmith, Fish Management Specialist here at Aquatic Control. Today we're gonna to talk about a pond here at our headquarters that we've always done vegetation management on. We've treated the algae to keep everything looking really nice. But a few years ago, we noticed that the fish populations fell really far out of balance. And we determined that it was gonna be quicker and more cost effective to go ahead and renovate this pond with a chemical called rotenone. Now we're gonna do a video in the future on this whole topic, so you can look for that. But today we're gonna to do this video about every management step that we've taken along the way. This video is gonna cover a lot of different management strategies and management tools. We've done a lot of videos on all these topics, so if you wanna check those out, you can see those on our YouTube channel. So in 2019, we determined that we wanted to start over with this fishery, give us a clean slate. So we went ahead with the Rotenone application. We still had a little bit of time before winter set in, so we went ahead and installed some of our Mossback products that you'll see. This turned out to be a project that we wanted to work on for the next few years. As we had time, we introduced some Pond King fish habitat, some Texas Hunter, Texas Angler fish habitat, and we also installed a couple different pea gravel spawning beds that you'll see. So what are we accomplishing with all this habitat, or why did we put in all this work to improve our habitat? Really what we want to achieve is, a big thing is creating small little spaces for our little fish, our little bluegill and forage fish to get into. We're trying to create sanctuary areas with a lot of this stuff. Something else we're trying to do is add loafing structure for our largemouth bass to use as ambush points. That way they can conserve their energy. We're also trying to improve our spawning habitat. So our bluegill and our red ear can reproduce well and make sure we can keep up with the predation pressure from all of our largemouth bass. So going into the spring of 2020, we had three things we wanted to get done. We wanted to get our diffused aeration system going. We obviously were gonna put some fish in at some point in the spring. And once that happened, we wanted to get a fish feeder to do some supplemental feeding. So our diffused aeration system went in pretty early that spring. What this is gonna do for us is create an insurance policy against any oxygen related issues, but it's also gonna open up the entire water column, the entire pond for our fish to use. That way in the summertime, they're not only trapped in that top layer. So obviously we're planning to put some fish in the water at some point. Uh, we wanted to start with the, you know, our goals before we got too far into this. So we decided we wanted a well-balanced pond, but we also wanted to lean it kind of skew it a little bit towards a quality bass fishery. So we moved our stocking numbers around a little bit and we landed around 1,500 bluegill per acre, a little less than 400 red ear per acre, and around 30 pounds of fathead minnows per acre. So you probably noticed some of the three to five inch bluegill or the three to four inch red ear that we put in the stocking plan. The reason we like to do that is to speed up the process to get some reproduction going in our pond this first year in 2020. We're expecting those three to five inch bluegill, three to four inch red ear to actually spawn by the end of this first season. So after our fish went in, we set up our Texas Hunter fish feeder. We start off, you know, it's still springtime, so you wanna start off pretty slow. These fish um, are not used to feeding at a feeder yet in your pond, so you gotta be patient there. We use our, our feed, AC Trophy Pond feed, and a big component of this feed in this scenario is that <clears throat> there's a portion of our pellets that are very small. And so these initial stockings, you can get these little fish to start feeding pretty quickly. And so in our case, we had pretty good activity by you know middle of May or sooner. So why did we decide we wanted to do supplemental feeding with the Texas Hunter feeders and our fish feed? Well, the short answer is we wanted to speed up the growth. The bluegill are gonna be the main thing in this pond that are gonna utilize this, but that can be pretty important. We want to increase the bluegill production, which is then gonna transfer up the food chain into our largemouth bass. After the feeder had been running about a month or so with our shocker boat around here all the time, we decided to dump that in and collect some really quick data. 
We found out the bluegill were already up to six inches and really healthy. Our, our feed had been doing a great job. And once we realized we had bluegill growing that fast, we knew they were gonna want to start spawning pretty soon. So this pushed us to get our first spawning bed in in the summer of 2020. Moving on to the fall of 2020, we decided to collect some more data real quickly. We found our bluegill were up to seven inches, doing really well. Our red ear were up to five and a half inches. And the point I wanna make here is that within six months or less, you have fish in your pond big enough to go down and enjoy fishing for. Seven inches, six inch bluegill, you can take the kids down there and catch them on rod and reel. And I really attribute this to the decision we made back in the spring to set up the fish feeder and to use a good quality fish food. Good job. Get ready. Go, 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 get him. Reel, reel, reel. Oh, man. Get him out of the weeds. Keep reeling. <laughs> Walk up there, get him out of the weeds. Walk up and lift him up high. Lift him up high. What'd you get? Pull him out of there. Look at that whopper. Yeah. In the spring of 2021, we again started up the fish feeder. Uh, this go around, we were able to start it quite a bit earlier because those fish are feed trained and they're used to that. But the big thing we accomplished in 2021 was stocking our largemouth bass, obviously. We, you'll notice we waited there, so we wanna give our forage fish a year, and then in year two, we like to do our largemouth bass. So we put in 115 largemouth bass that came out to approximately 85 bass per acre. It's pretty common for people to go with 100 bass per acre. We chose 85 per acre because again, our goals were to have a balanced fishery, but we still wanna skew it towards more quality bass fishery. So the way you do that is you, you spread out that ratio of bass to bluegill. So we're going a little bit of less largemouth bass and we went a little bit higher than a typical stocking for our bluegill. So now we're in the fall of 2021. We're again gonna take some quick data at the end of the season in October. Our bluegill are up to eight and a half inches now. Our red ear are up to seven inches. And our largemouth bass, we're catching a few up to 11 inches already. And so again, the takeaway is, you know, 11 inch largemouth bass is a, not a trophy by any means, obviously, but the point is you can enjoy these fish already. We're in year two, the bass have been here, you know, less than six months, but you can be down at the pond and enjoying these fish already. And we still have a lot of progress to go. So starting in spring 2022, again, we obviously started the feeder, but now here we are in October of 2022. Just the other day, we did our end of season fish survey, and we're gonna take a look at some of these current results. Our bluegill population appears to be doing really well. We saw a lot of evidence of high reproduction. Uh, we caught bluegill up to nine inches and really now that the pond's becoming a little bit established, people are hanging out out here. We actually know there's bluegill out there bigger than that just through them fishing and catching really nice bluegill. Our largemouth bass are doing really well as well. We found largemouth from three inches all the way up to 14 and a half inches. And there's really two main takeaways that we got from this data. One is on the lower end. So those are young of year fish that these adults up here just produced this year. And that's really important as a pond owner to know because as soon as they get up to seven, eight, nine inches where you can catch them on rod and reel, we're probably gonna start to remove those. We really wanna avoid a bass crowded situation. So that's extremely important to realize. And it's not always gonna happen that second year that your fish are in there. So walk around your pond in August, early September, and you may see those little bass fry. And that should be a clue next year and the year after you need to start to harvest some of those fish. 
The second takeaway is just how far these bass have come. In less than a year and a half, they went from four to five inches up to 14 and a half inches, and some of those fish were just shy of two pounds, extremely high relative weights. And so some of those fish are on a trajectory to potentially produce some really nice trophy fish in the future. So obviously we're not done yet. We feel like we're in a great place based on the data that we've collected and we're headed in a great direction, but there's still some things you have to do. Mostly at this point, the pond's self-sufficient but you need to still consider you know, what fish you're gonna harvest. That's gonna play a big role in, in where this pond goes from here. So we have a video on that. If you have questions on that, I would check that out. There's a lot of good details in there. The other thing, what we'll continue to do is shock it and collect our progress. But as a regular you know, initial pond owner, we generally recommend around year five to have an electrofishing survey done to figure out where you're going these fisheries can really sway pretty quickly if you aren't harvesting enough fish or something changes out there. So use a pond management company like us to help keep in the, in the right direction. We hope this video gives you guys a great example of what it's like to start a new pond. Hopefully this will help you start a fishery that you and your family can enjoy for a long time. If you guys have any questions about this process, please feel free to call or leave questions in the comments.